Hey everyone, Dominic the Primetime Treasure Hunter here. If you are just here for the information on cleaning the stubborn chalk off of the chalkboard, then skip ahead to around the 10 minute mark or so. But if you want some other useful tips and entertaining zany little skits along the way, then just stay tuned. Will you stop? Will you be serious? My goodness, you cannot keep breathing like that around all the female characters here. You're freaking them out. I have to deal with constant calls from human resources and stop pointing that thing at me. I keep telling him that he doesn't listen. Uh, you're out of here, Vader. I I've had it. I've had it up to here already. And uh, you know where you're going? Uh, someone who's going to take real good care of you. It's going to be Carl Bach. I mentioned him yesterday. He was interested in you from that case, and uh, he is going off to Carl. I want to give Carl subscriber of the day. It's his birthday today. He's such a great supporter. Give Carl happy birthdays down below uh, in the comment section. So many of you know him from uh, coming by uh, on the show. You know, Darth Vader was a little bit upset to find out that he was leaving because he's just so used to bullying everyone in the Darth Vader case because it's you know, your face on it and everything. I know I've heard that a thousand times as well. Um, but it was time for him to go. Uh, so $24 uh, for Darth Vader. He is the 1977 version. If you're wondering how to figure that out, you just have to peel back the cape and right underneath it, right by the leg, that's where you're going to see uh, the date uh, for the 1977 uh, figure here. Uh, in addition to that, there's a couple things I want you to know about Star Wars figures if you ever come across them, because one of the mistakes people make is they'll find a Darth Vader or, you know, a Luke Skywalker, Obi-Wan Kenobi or something like that, and it'll say 1977 on it, and they'll think that they hit payday over it. Well, First of all, it's not true if you don't have the accessories. So you have to have the accessories, things like a cape, if it came with something like that, uh, and definitely the weapons. And the weapons are uh, pretty small. So uh, now the lightsaber is actually a little bit bigger compared to like the blaster guns and stuff. But even with a bigger weapon like this, there can be flaws on it that you might miss. For example, on this one here, the tip is missing. Now, I've sold them with the tip, but uh, there's a little flimsy tip that's supposed to come off the end of this. It's the same with Luke Skywalker's uh, lightsaber, and it's the same one, uh, same thing with uh, Obi-Wan Kenobi's. So, just having that extra little tip on there adds a ton of value. With regards to the cape, one of the things that you want to keep in mind is are there any tears or are there any gouges? And you can see here, there's a circular little gouge there. You also want to check by the uh, shoulder areas too. There could be little uh, tears there uh, as well. And Star Wars collectors are picky, so you want to make sure you disclose it. If not, and you mention it, you might get a return uh, related to that. Now, what I like to do is have a little fun with the tears and have a little fun with the gouges if I come across them. What I do is in my description section, I disclose that these things are present and then I make a joke and I say that they were probably obtained from a battle somewhere, you know, a lightsaber battle or something like that. People kind of get a kick out of it. You know, I actually say, hey, I think this, uh, you know, little gouge up top makes them look uh, kind of extra cool right there. So uh, that's what I do. I try to turn uh, item weaknesses sometimes into selling points and people have a lot of fun uh, with that. I've actually had comments about that, that that's made people like the piece uh, because I made a comment like that. So uh, Jesse Shops knows I, I did that once with some some salt and pepper shakers that were sharks and there were some little scuff marks on it and uh, I said that they were battle wounds from uh, you know going after uh, prey and stuff like that. Uh, you did see I had these uh, Batgirl uh, comic items here. Uh, this is a graphic novel right here and this one right here is a soft cover. It's a trade paperback. Neither of these would have sold for uh, $10 or more and that's my minimum in my store. Nothing less than $9.99. So what I do in these situations is I combine like items to create value. So these sold together for $13. That makes it uh, worth it for me. So I'm going to pack those ones up, get those shipped out, get Vader out of here as well. And uh, then I'm going to show you some other pulls and some other uh, things throughout the day we're going to be doing here at Primetime Treasure Headquarters on Memorial Day. Daisy, what are you wearing reindeer antlers for? It's almost summertime. <laughs> we got to get you in a bathing suit or something instead.
Now that's more like a daisy. That is a nice bathing suit you have on there. <laughs> a little flower on there. You know who's gonna be excited if he sees it, your boyfriend. I don't wanna say his name because you'll go crazy. Let's go do those inventory pulls. Uh, one of them is actually from the estate sale that I went to that I did uh, the premiere video on at the beer collector's house. So thanks so much everybody uh, who came by and watched that. We had 75 people about just at the premiere. So it was an awesome showing. Uh, it's great. I know a lot of people love those uh, treasure hunting videos and there were so many treasures there if you didn't see uh, that video. So uh, I'm excited to get this one up and listed for sell it all is interested in this one. So I'm going to put this one up today instead of pulling one of those clown and magician uh, prints because I don't want things to get uh, boring uh, and stale. So mix it up a little bit with that. Uh, and then we've got uh, two uh, poster prints. So I'm going to pull those out right now. So Kilroy wrote in requesting that I pull out this Jedi battle poster here. He was curious to see uh, what it looked like. You cannot tell from the outside. So I'm interested in it as well. So we'll open this one up in just a few moments. Also, the Hustlin' Mana wrote in. Let me know that him and his daughter, Piper, love watching the channel together. They're big fans of Daisy, so we'll make sure Daisy's in this video for Piper. Um, thanks, Piper, for watching. He told me that uh, Piper is a big fan of the princess and the frog. So we are going to grab uh, this poster uh, for you as well and open this up, and hopefully you like what's inside. And as usual, if anyone else has a poster request, just let me know down in the comments. I'll open it up and give you a shout out. I turned some of the labels around uh, so you could see them a little bit better. Hi, Daisy. Could you say hi to Piper in your little bathing suit? Hi, Piper. <laughs> hi, Piper. Daisy says hi. She says hi to all her kids' fans. She loves them. And uh, she hopes they keep coming back to see her. I'm sure she has plenty of other entertaining things for us throughout the rest of the year. Right, Daisy? You got a long showbiz career ahead of you, I think, here on this channel. All right, well, here's the poster. Definitely pretty cool. Jedi vs. Sith. We've got Darth Maul right in the middle, taking on Qui-Gon Jinn and Obi-Wan Kenobi. So uh, this poster is actually over 20 years old, comes from 1999. I'm going to list it for $40 and then just Take it down from there. If it doesn't sell, just lower the price uh, bit by bit. And we'll see what happens with this one. All right, Piper, here it is, the Princess and the Frog poster. I really love this one because it has a big giant alligator in it. And the Primetime Treasure Hunter is a big alligator fan. You probably like the Princess more than the alligator. I understand that, but it's a really cool poster. Uh, right around $10 for this one. So I'll put it up in the store if you're interested. You could do it, Daisy. You could do it. Good job. <laughs> All right, let's head over to inside the shed. We've got a request that came in from Pink Elephant Limited. Has to do with a big sign that I've got back here in the corner that you'll see. It's this old Milwaukee sign. I mean, it pretty much stands out every time that I come into the shed, you're going to see it. So, you know, some people are wondering, am I gonna sell this thing and when? So I picked this up at a garage sale. It's in one of my videos from uh, way back. You might remember it. And it's not just what it might look like here. It might look like it's like a big mirror because this is, this is glass right here. Uh, but down below, there's like a chalkboard there. So I'm gonna pull it out and show you the whole thing. Okay, so as you can see, this is the chalkboard element I was telling you about now. It has been used before, and one of the reasons why I haven't really done anything with it yet is because I knew it needed some additional work. Now, not much work, but these stickers need to come off, and then I need to clean all this off uh, right here so it presents well. So I'm gonna work on that. I will try to get this listed tonight, and uh, you know we'll see what happens with it. All right, so I already got the stickers off, so I'm gonna need to just get the chalk off next and uh, clean it up a little bit more. Uh, with regards to shipping, one of the things to keep in mind is that even though it's a big item, it's a flat, thin item. So that always helps in keeping shipping costs down somewhat. It's not as bad as you might think, 
but just to give yourself maximal flexibility, make sure that you set your shipping for general economy one to 10 days because that doesn't commit you to a specific carrier. You could go to FedEx, you could go to uh, you know, USPS, you could go anywhere you want. Um, just gives you that flexibility on eBay depending on you know, where it is in the country that it's going to if you're using a free shipping model. If you're using calculated, then obviously that's gonna take care of itself. Okay, so here is the top layer of chalk removed, but the problem is we still have this residual chalk that's sort of ingrained into it right now. So we need to get that out with a deeper clean. Now that straight line coming through is residual uh, from the sticker. There was a little adhesive that was left behind. Uh, plus it's just, you know, basically a, a boundary of the difference between those stickers and some of that residual chalk that's there. So what we're gonna do is take a bucket of hot water or warm water. So I've got some right there. And then I put a half a cup of vinegar in there. So vinegar and water is a great uh, cleaning combination for a lot of different projects. And then what we're gonna do is take this squeegee and we're going to dip it into here. And what I'm gonna do is just go right onto here, scraping this off. Now I don't wanna make that noise here because it's gonna freak a lot of people out. So I'll do a little bit of this myself off camera and then I'll show you what it looks like. All right, well that looks a little bit better but it's still not quite where I want it to go. Now I could keep repeating this step over and over but I feel like it's gonna to take too long. So we're gonna move up to another notch here and try something different. All right, so at this point you have different options that you could try. You could use a scouring powder like Comet. Uh, I'm gonna use a spray right here. I'm gonna use Tylex Daily Shower. It's good enough for tiles and should be good enough for a chalkboard. So uh, I'm gonna use the soft end of a sponge uh, to clean this when I spray it. Uh, do not use the scouring side of the sponge because that will take off Part of the chalkboard so you don't want that all right there we go the fastest spray gun in the east right there and i always like to give it a couple extra squirts for good luck at the end Wow, look at that. It is just completely different now. It looks amazing. That is gonna pop in the photos. There's a few little last touch-ups I wanna do. I'm gonna get some residual lint off with a lint brush, and then I'm just gonna apply a little bit of olive oil on those uh, residual sticker areas down the middle just to get some of that stickiness off, and then uh, we should be all set. Look at that. I'm even busting out the lefty lint roll for you all. Look at that. I just used a little pledge or you could use uh, end dust just to spray down the, uh, the wood there and just you know get that nice and spiffy. So uh, the back looks fine. There was no uh, water or anything that uh, seeped through to the other side as you could uh, see here. Everything's fine, there's no water stains uh, or anything like that. So uh, we're all good. Just time to take some pictures and get this posted. So here's another advantage of those trifolds that I use. You could also use them to get a nice solid white background for signs, you know, even if you're shooting outside. So I'm just gonna take this, put it on there, and then you can take your photos. So there you go. I mean, that is gonna look sweet when I've got it listed up on eBay. Just crop it right around that. It's gonna look nice. And by the way, this is why I would suggest getting multiple trifolds because if you wanna take some longer view shots like this to get the base of the wood or the side of the wood, uh, the extra trifold is going to give you some additional margin to work with so you don't have to worry about uh, running out of white space. And here you could see the same principle just from the other angle.
I just wanted to be very clear about one thing, which is that I know I did mention a few brands in this video, but no part of this video at all was sponsored by any company. Uh, in fact, if the water and vinegar would have worked just fine, I would have stopped there. But uh, really, I think what really did the trick was this, the Tylex uh, daily shower. I mean, you know, it, I didn't even read that somewhere. I knew scouring agents could work, so I just had this handy and I figured, you know what, it works on tile so it should work on a chalkboard surface. So here you go. I think a new discovery here on the Primetime Treasure Hunter YouTube channel, I'm not sure. Tylex, if you wanna give me a ring and uh, you know we could talk a little bit, you know, let me know. Uh, same goes for uh, End Dust and Pledge. <laughs> hey everyone, a couple of last sales to show you before I wrap up for the day. The first one is what's inside this poster tube right here. It is the princess and the frog poster that I showed you earlier. Don't worry, it is going off to Piper. I messaged her dad to let him know that I did put up this listing because I didn't want it to go to somebody else before they at least had a chance to see it. So he said that she's gonna be super excited. Piper, this is coming out to you. Uh, sold for $14, there was one other person who had the poster priced lower than that, but the person's feedback was not good at all with lots of complaints about the condition of the poster uh, when they would arrive. And so you could use that to your advantage and bump up the price a little bit. It adds value to your own item. Now this is a $60 poster sale. I can't show it to you though because the contents are adult related. It's a picture of the cover from the Nothing Shocking album by Jane's Addiction. Of course, you could look it up if you're interested to see, but um, you know, just make sure there's no kids around when you're doing that. But this is one of the many posters that I pulled out of that barn. It's a state sale video that I showed called uh, The Barn in the Middle of Nowhere or Posters in the Barn of the Middle of Nowhere. You could just look it up on my channel and you'll find it. Uh, I just crushed it that day with poster sales. So uh, yeah, there were some you know, 10 to $15 posters in there as well, but there were a lot of valuable ones and this is one of them. So happy to see that one go out the door. Uh, another one that's sold right here is one of these prints. Uh, this is kind of an edgy Spider-Man slash uh, Venom print right here. Uh, you can see we've got a little edgy saying right there. And uh, this one sold for $12. I have a bunch of other original art pieces of this size uh, by Chris Giarusso uh, in my store if anyone's interested. All original, all 100%. Uh, authentic and one other one here you know not much to uh, speak of with this one it's just one of these uh, old role-playing game books I have a feeling the person who purchased it uh, was just looking for this specific one maybe played it when they were younger and uh, this is just one that goes out the door for 10 bucks this is one of the many role-playing game books that I got uh, in that storage unit uh, hall pickup and um, you know there it's just like the posters right there were some that uh, sold for 10 bucks and then there are other ones that sold for like 70 dollars. so uh, that's what happens when you do bulk deals i love doing bulk deals uh, and i don't mind sending things out for uh, 10 bucks at all so uh, that's it for today folks uh, i hope that you enjoyed the video all the little tips and stuff and all the fun regular zany antics that i have going on on this channel my goal is that when you come to this channel that you never know what you're going to see when you hit that play button and that you find the information educational, entertaining, and fun. If so, make sure you hit the like button, make sure you comment down below, and don't forget to subscribe. That's super duper important. I'll see you back at the next one, everyone. Take care.